So what is the the way to coexist though? Because I mean, if 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 those if just listening to one another isn't going to be enough, because you know that's not as you say the the, the main the main problem here. You know, it's, it should be obvious by now. Mm -hmm. What is given that we need to coexist? People of different colors and in, in the same state, in the same place, in the same departments. What's a way of doing that? Mm -hmm better than the way we've been doing it so far take away the ability of white people to harm people they don't like so this is this is issue rep, uh, redistributing power there are roughly 120 let's be generous let's say 150 black philosophers mm -hmm. that means that if you can find schools that hire two to three black philosophers per department you only need to run a hand a hand 50 schools to, to dedicate themselves to hiring black people you have full black employment in the field that shouldn't be difficult Nobody, nobody thinks it's difficult hiring three women or three queer scholars or three white men, right? We have departments full of these people. So what is it that stops us from hiring three black people? When I was at Texas A&M, it was a fight to have more than one black person on foul, right? And then, and then when, the, when it was reviewed, the idea is like, well, you have one black person, you're better than most departments in the country. Now think, now think about that seriously for a moment. The idea is philosophy is racist because philosophy doesn't have more than zero to one black faculty members in a department. You have one. So you look like other departments. It would logically follow you are therefore racist like the other departments in terms of representation, right? But we don't see it that way. We say, good job. Now, could you imagine if someone said, don't worry, we have one woman in the department. We're okay on gender. You see, that's about the way that we prioritize and value different bodies because of skin color. Right? It's about how we value the category. So if we want to solve the problem, then the issue is you have to give more power to black people in philosophy. And that means that senior black people should have more mobility. Senior black people should have resources. Senior black people's letters should actually matter. Right? These 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 are very concrete ways. This and notice, notice how this isn't just about getting along. This is about dealing with the problem. If the issue is you don't you have black people that are constantly being pushed out of philosophy into teaching our liberal arts institutions, then hire black people at tier one and two research institutions. Well, that's hard to do. There's so many people out. Well, not really, because when you look at the representational distribution of people, if you hire two black people a year in a given field in 50 departments, you solve it. Now, how many, how many departments are there in philosophy in the United States and the UK? Come on, see this, you see what I'm saying? This is not a hard problem to solve. But the, the issue is, there's a resistance to what it means for us all to get along. You don't have enough black people in philosophy not to get along. I mean, you can think about it. You can go through your whole career and at most have to never have to work with a black person, just see them at conferences, which is the problem, right? There are so few black philosophers, right? In the United States, there's like, what, 21, 22,000 black or, or, or white philosophers, right? Like 16,000 are white men, seven, 8,000 are white women. You know, I forgot what, you know, nor its numbers were, right? You're talking about thousands of people, right? And that's and notice that's not overall in the academy, right? Because you got almost half the academy's white women. Okay. So basically 1.1 1 .1 or 2 million people in the American Academy are white men and women. Black people are 110,000. So you have the institutions to absorb the people, but the reality of the situation is that white people in the academy don't want to deal with black people, which is why they're comfortable with being one or two percent of the discipline in various disciplines, right? So, no, the issue is not about getting along. It's not how we get along. The question is, how do we adjust a system and allocate resources to solve the inequalities that we're okay with, right? Getting a, the question of getting along is is, a, is too complacent because what it says is you have a group of black people that are dissatisfied. They don't have any power because black people don't decide who get hired, hired in philosophy departments. So how do they become okay with their situation? How do they come, become okay with their marginalization and their unemployment? And their inability to get jobs despite white despite white departments hiring white people to study race and not other black people, right? See, there, it's it's asking us to become okay with the status quo, and furthermore, it asks something much more insidious that I would think would just be abhorrent to the very practice of philosophy. It asks and demands that certain black people don't ask certain questions. It asks us to entertain hires about people who outrepresent us, be they white women or white men, etc., in various positions. And be okay with that because we know those positions aren't for us. We get hired to study race. They get hired to study Nietzsche or to do logic or machine learning. 
as if the only interests that black philosophers have are in fact about race and their own oppression. Yeah. So we can't, so contrary to the, the good spirited query <laughs> of how do we get along? Um, I think that's the wrong approach for black philosophers to adopt in the 21st century. The question is how do we form as an extremely small minority, um, an impetus to redistribute power and resources um, that demands near full employment uh, and access to tenure and institutional resources so that the job market and hiring practices are not determined by white liberals by the extent to which we confirm or deny their beliefs.